Hello everyone, Mike here, and uh, uh, I'm doing this before I post the uh, farewell to park housing uh, vlog, which uh, has, I don't know if I'm going to be posting this first or after, but um, yeah, it's I'm going to be doing this, uh, what do you call it, a uh, sort of oddity archive kind of video, actually more like a... Ben's junk, I guess you could call this Mike's junk sort of video where I'm, I'm just showing you uh, some of my uh, home video finds of the past, I don't know, year or so. Just recent-ish past. Well, not so much recent because I've got <clears throat> I've got my uh, Laserdisc collection and it, right in my arm here and it's my entire Laserdisc collection for that for the record. So I'll show you, I'll show you those first. It's, uh, right here we've got, <laughs> let me get that in frame. Scissors, starring Sharon Stone. And this is a, I discovered this in, like, Bad Movies We Love, which is a very enjoyable publication. And d this movie, uh, not everything in that book has, has proven to be, you know, uh, worthwhile, but this movie has just very much shown itself to be probably the camp classic of the 90s that isn't called Showgirls. It's amazing. <laughs> you really have to see this. To, it has to be seen to be believed. It's yeah, This this came out right before uh, Sharon Stone broke through on with Basic Instinct. So. It's... Uh, and uh, I think it came out like on video afterwards to kind of cash in on that. Anyway, the other uh, another bad movies we love thing here, Sudden Fear, with uh, Joan Crawford, Jack Palance, and Gloria Graham. This is this is great for me because it, it takes place in San Francisco, so there's great San Francisco uh, period footage. Oh, and and one I haven't actually gotten around to watching properly yet. Fifty Two Pickup. Uh, which uh, is a canon group uh, movie, Golden Globus production. That pretty much tells you all you need to know. Although they actually got, uh, what's his name, uh, John Frankenheimer to direct this, so... But, God, it looks so very trashy. I mean, vanity's in it, for God's sake. Oh. <laughs> and, oops, I didn't mean to kick it. Uh, the Little Prince, the musical version from the 70s. It's just... Um, here, here's the conversation I remember having in the store. It's like, oh, I remember this movie being terrible. And then Al throws over my shoulder, yo, you should totally buy it. And I say, oh, I don't know. And he says, oh, if you don't buy it, I'm going to buy it for you. It's just, oh, my God. My friends are bad movie enablers. And bad movie enablers. And this movie wasn't as awful as I remember it being, although it's still hardly good. It's very, it's, it's extremely mediocre. It's one of those movies that... This is a kid's movie, therefore it has to be a musical. There's no need for this movie to be a musical. It's also like, really, really didactic. And it also has that sort of over-the-top whimsy that's just... In a way, it's very French. Very French whimsy, despite the fact that I don't think any French people actually had any input into this at all. It was all, um... Uh... <laughs> Lerner and Lowe. It was, uh... And everyone is saying, it's Lerner and Lowe, you can't, it's, it's, it has to be good. It's just, well, this was around the same time that, you know, the musical uh, Lost Horizon came out. Remember that piece of crap? That was Bacharach and David, and that was terrible. The, the songs were just god-awful. Anyway, uh, then last, the last of my laser discs, The Ritz, which I'd heard about for years, and I finally got to see, and I kind of wish that I'd, like, save this for, like, a group viewing, because it's really, it's just an amazing comedy, and you kind of have to see it uh, with a group to fully appreciate it, but I, I had a good time watching it. Uh, yeah, it, Vito Russo kind of bashed that in the celluloid closet, and I have to tell you, he's way off base on that. that it's like, screw him. That, that's a good movie. I, mean, I, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but really, screw him. <laughs> uh, and let's get on with the videotapes. Let's start with the clamshell ones. First of all, uh, here's an obscure one. Uh, the Wizard of Oz. Um... I had to get that one because it's the video for kids 
version with the really tacky font on the front there. And right here, the Water Babies, which I, I seem to remember seeing people requesting that the Nostalgia Critic do. But um, I, I never, I never really heard of it until now. And uh, it, though it looks that the cover art kind of makes you think that it's going to be entirely animated, it seems like three fourths of this is actually live action. Interesting cast. The, the one thing that pisses me off is it's directed by Lionel Jeffries, who doesn't actually appear in the movie. And um, well, I, I don't know if that really pisses me off. It just disappoints me because. Lionel Jeffries is an amazing actor who steals any movie he's in. No matter how small the part he's in in, in a movie, he just totally steals the movie. And uh, I don't know if it's the original source material, but, you know, I somebody did not understand how fresh water works. Because this kid falls into a river and runs into a lobster, a swordfish, a seahorse, and a shark and all of those are saltwater creatures so uh, someone was confused i think the, the ichthyologist in me just kind of it, it kind armchair ichthyologist just kind of cringes at that uh, what else do we have here we've got uh the west german oops stop kick I keep hitting that thing that's the problem with this uh, Rumpelstiltskin. I'm sorry about the glare, but it's kind of a gray day today, so I can't use natural light. And also, I've got, like, shirts hanging in the window drying. But this is the, like, 50s West German Rumpelstiltskin. And it's a more fairy tale matinee kind of uh, stuff. Oh, the animated made-for-TV Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe which I hadn't seen in years. I could have sworn that this was made for PBS because uh, when I saw it in the 80s for the first time, it was on PBS. And I, I later found out that this was a co-production between the Episcopal Church, you know, big surprise, and uh, the CTW, Children's Television Workshop, for CBS television. But yeah, that's like the... Um, the the CTW tie-in, I guess, explains why this got re-ran on uh, public television. And there's like, it says Lethco at the bottom in um, red magic marker. I think that, I don't know, it's like a high school or a teacher or something. I don't know. Uh, elementary school, I was thinking. But yeah, here we go. The Sword and the Rose, which I just bought because, you know, uh, James Robinson Justice is in it, playing the part he was born to play. And, of course, another uh, Bad Movies We Love uh, selection, The Sandpiper with Liz and Dick. It's total Liz and Dick exploitation, um, especially Liz exploitation. I mean, she's just in these outfits that just emphasize her breasts. In fact, there's one, one bit where she's first, like, walking into his office. Uh, R Richard Burton plays this Episcopal priest. There's a lot of Episcopal stuff in this video. It's like this Episcopal priest slash um, boarding school headmaster and, uh, and she's just like in this like really really low cut top that just emphasizes her cleavage and there's like another one where like the guy like rips open her top and then you just see oh my god it's uh, actually the video is kind of a disappointment I mean the movie's kind of disappointing but we've got another stack here um I think I posted this one to uh, Ben's uh, timeline. Uh, the <laughs> fun time video Tweety Bird. Is that even in the shot? Yeah. Thing. It's uh, that was uh, mainly for the cover. I mean, it's, it's like kids scribbled on it in crayon. It's like I would have done even worse to it if it was mine. But oh, and recently I I taken a. Took a trip to the thrift store, and this is kind of why you have to go there every week, because you never know what's going to happen. And all this stuff from this old um, video store in San Pablo, which is a suburb around here, just got dumped into there, like including all these insane-looking Filipino movies. I've never heard of this before, and I just had to get it. It's called Batang Z, and it's just like this really insane-looking children's movie, and... Uh, <laughs> 
I, I guess it's a little bit cursed because uh, this actually broke in my VCR when I was like reviewing it. But yeah, I'm gonna have to. I might do another sort of you know mod of the archive video showing me repairing this tape because I have to repair this tape. This just this is just too. It's too uh, classic. Oh, and here's another movie. I'm gonna have to like look at this because I'll never remember the title. It's got the most amazing title. It's called Ang Ajimat Anting Anting Nilolo. And there's what it looks like. It's like this one is uh I saw some reviews of this online and they're they're just totally trashing this movie, so that could either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending. And I'm I'm gonna apologize for the glare on this one. This one's not Filipino, but um it is from the same video store. It's a little more typical fairy tale matinee uh, fair. The Great Land of Small. Uh, let me let me hold that up there like that. Oops, sorry. But yeah, uh, this um, it's made in Canada, and it, it really looks made in Canada. I mean, it's very Canadian, and apparently made in uh, like uh, the Christmas Martian, made in uh, Quebec, because like all the names on the credits are French, except for the director who has a Czech name for some reason. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, another really old one, I, I, unfortunately. Yeah, it's The Blue Bird, because we recently had a, a viewing of the uh, 1976 Blue Bird, the Made in the Soviet Union Blue Bird, with the amazingly infamous uh, production problems. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to compare and contrast. Unfortunately, this is the colorized version, but oh well. You get, you take what you can get. Oh, and uh, um, absolutely apropos of nothing. Not not the usual sort of movie tale, movie explorer, fairy tale matinee thing. But uh, the Prisoner of Second Avenue with Jack Lemmon and Anne Bancroft. It's of course based on the uh, Neil Simon play. I actually have a history with the original play of this because in high school drama class I played Mel in a scene from this. Yeah, and like other things were like the the grumpy colonel in Tea House of the August Moon and uh, the William Powell part in Life with Father. So I guess I guess I was just very er, at a very early age convincing at playing middle aged men. So <laughs> a little um, yeah, that's very uh, strike to your ego and. Obviously, the find of this recent thing. Um, yet another uh, Bad Movies We Love selection. Love Has Many Faces, starring Lana Turner, Cliff Robertson, and Hugh O'Brien. Uh, I've been looking for this movie for years, and I finally found a copy. And uh, I haven't actually watched it yet. I'm saving this up for Bad Movie Night, because it... it Unlike the Sandpiper, this one looks like it's really going to pay off. It really looks like... I'm, I This looks, you know, scissors worth, like, scissors level of ridiculous campiness. This is... Uh, yeah, I, I remember reading that uh, Hugh O'Brien would go on these, like, quiz shows and talk shows, and the, he would joke about Lana Turner's million-dollar wardrobe and say that his wardrobe cost 98 cents. Because he'd go... Because, like, basically through the entire movie, he's wearing nothing but, like, these skimpy bikini briefs. <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyway, that's all I got for now, so... I'll see you around.